Good Naban Dortmund. Uh, how's everybody doing? Uh, uh, imagine uh, it's midnight uh, and you're sitting in your living room uh, comfortably on your sofa. Uh, it's a little dark, maybe you are a little sleepy or so, and all of a sudden you see a stranger in your living room. Uh, how, how would you react? For instance, uh, you, sir, how, how would you react? Could anybody answer that? For you, sir, how, how would you react? Okay, you would scream, great, that's uh, one possible reaction. There could be uh, lots of reactions, uh, what, you might, uh, what you might end up doing. But for sure, I would certainly get alarmed because, uh, okay, I, I don't know who is this person and he's some stranger, I don't know who he is. Maybe he's a friend of mine <laughs> uh, or maybe he's my enemy. So maybe it's a robber uh, and he's trying to steal something from my house. In this case, uh, maybe like a radio or something. Uh, or uh, maybe it's your friend, or maybe it's uh, Christmas Eve and it's Santa Claus <laughs> who's come to give you some nice presents. <clears throat> uh, who's come to give you some nice presents and so on, so you don't know. I would certainly get alarmed. And this is exactly what happens <clears throat> when you transplant an organ uh, from one donor to a recipient, for example, a kidney. Now, uh, it is common knowledge that when you transplant an organ from a donor to a recipient, the immune system of this recipient gets alarmed, as I just mentioned. Uh, but, for how, but do you perhaps wonder or perhaps do you know why or how does the immune system get alarmed? So, just as everybody has uh, a fingerprint on their thumb, uh, every cell on your body has its own fingerprint. This fingerprint is called the major histocompatibility complex. Uh, <laughs> don't get a vocabulary complex. I would explain what this is. So the major histocompatibility complex, or simply the MHC. The MHC is uh, like a fingerprint on every cell of your body. Uh, so for instance, every cell that this organ is made up of, or every cell that your body is made of, has this thing called as the MHC. But this fingerprint is in the form of some molecules present on every cell. So shown here are these molecules which make up this MHC. So <clears throat> just like your fingerprint, your MHC is unique to you and it's uh, special to you and it's part of your identity. So it's kind of like a signature that you have on every cell of your body. Uh, and if you're wondering, that's not my signature, that's Barack Obama's signature. So, uh, <clears throat> moving on, um, as I said, uh, your immune system gets alarmed when an organ is transplanted. Now, what are perhaps the various components in this process of uh, recognition of this foreign organ? So shown here is the immune system with the various kinds of uh, cells that maybe it has. Now, I would take these 10 minutes and try to explain all of these cells in much detail. Um, I'm kidding, I, I will not explain these in detail, but maybe just a few of these cells which would matter for my talk. So for instance, uh, you have this cell called as the CD4 positive cell. You have this cell called as the CD8 positive cell. Uh, perhaps some of you may have heard of these cells because they are quite popular from a long time and for instance, in the case of HIV infections or so on, you hear of these cells. But what's quite interesting is uh, this set of cells called as the CD4 negative, CD8 negative, or also called as the double negative T cell. Uh, now please keep this cell in mind because that's what my talk would be focused on later. So as I mentioned that um, you've transplanted this organ and uh, the immune system of the recipient has seen a foreign fingerprint on this organ and it's got alarmed. And then now it's deciding what it should do, so it starts screaming. <clears throat> but there are, um, this process is very complex and very dynamic. So um, it doesn't know whether this is a friend of mine or whether this is an enemy of mine. So uh, all these cells which I just showed you, they all start screaming and they all start shouting and they are trying to decide what to do with this organ. So, there are some cells which shout, kill, kill, kill. 
and they say uh, we should attack this organ because it's foreign. Whereas, on the other hand, there are some cells which say, <laughs> come here, minus user, give me a hug. <clears throat> <clears throat> Something from my personal experience, maybe. But uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so shown here is this balance, which shows what happens in the clinic. So when you transplant an organ, most often these cells, which say attack, they are predominant. So they are. Uh, it's more vigorous the attack, and this happens in the clinic quite often. Now, if I am a patient who has received an organ and my doctor shows me this, maybe I would die of a heart attack before dying of the organ transplant. <laughs> so this is quite a bad outcome, and it's quite um, a desirable outcome in the clinic to perhaps have this scenario in which you have these cells which say accept the organ to predominate in the body. And that's why it's quite relevant in research to find out about these kinds of cells which may cause perhaps acceptance, acceptance of this organ. Three minutes to go. Thank you. And that's what my um, uh, PhD deals with. Uh, this cell, which I mentioned, the double negative T cell, was shown to perhaps cause acceptance of human organs. But this was shown only in some experimental mice or some mouse models. <laughs> uh, I don't think the, these mice, perhaps, they looked more like this. So how did we know about these cells? So quite uh, through simple experiments, there were some donor mice which gave an organ to the recipient mice. And as expected, the recipient mice attacked this organ and it was rejected. But when you have the donor mice giving an organ to the recipient mice, and along with this, you give some of these double negative T cells, it was seen that the organ was accepted. So we had some clue that these cells are capable of causing acceptance of the organ. So my PhD basically deals with trying to study the properties of these double negative cells. So for instance, what chemicals they secrete in the body. For instance, what are the numbers in the human body after transplantation. And all this in humans, because we don't know much about these cells in humans, we just know uh, some basic uh, details about them from mouse models, as I said. Now, what I'm doing basically is I'm getting blood from these transplant patients and this blood I'm getting at different points of time, so one month after transplantation, two months after transplantation and so on. And at these time points, I analyze this blood for the presence of this double negative cell. <clears throat> now, what my uh, progress has been so far and what my outlooks for the future are as follows, I observed that the numbers of these double negative cells increases after transplantation. And after I observed this, I was quite uh, excited. I thought I would win the Nobel Prize or so, because uh, this means that these cells are actually uh, important in humans after the transplantation has occurred, and they may cause acceptance of this organ. But <clears throat> surprise, surprise, as it always happens in research, uh, you start dreaming and then you wake up from your dream, I observed that these cells are capable of secreting this chemical called as interferon gamma. Now, interferon gamma is a bad chemical, and this chemical may be capable of causing rejection of the organ. So uh, this is just some primary work, and still a lot more needs to be done in this case to actually find out if these cells are capable of uh, causing acceptance of the organ or not. In the end, I would like to conclude by saying that we know that in mathematics, Two negatives make a positive, but in human organ transplantations, whether these double negative cells equal a positive outcome, we still have to find out. Vielen Dank. <laughs>